Now the next thing we should do is ask the same question again, but now say, let's calculate the flow rate. So we've got exactly the same parameters here, except we're asking to calculate the flow rate in the piping system for P1 minus P2 as solved in the previous question. So we'll take exactly the same system and we'll take exactly the pressure drop that we just calculated and say, what's the flow rate we should get? And of course we know the answer. It should be exactly the same flow rate, but now we have to solve for that. And we're going to have to solve for that in an iterative fashion. And I'm going to go through and show you how you can write a nice generic function in Python or whatever programming language you choose to do this for you and make the work tremendously easier. So starting with our governing equation we had before, we can expand this out. And now I'm going to rearrange it just a little bit so that I can make a general function. I'm going to get my P1 minus P2 over here. I'm going to bring the Z2 over here so that I get a plus rho G Z1 minus Z2. And then I'm going to leave on this side all of the things which are multiplying velocities. So I get this term here, which is if I have a change in the velocity because of a pipe expansion or contraction, that's going to affect my pressure in the system. And then I have the major and the minor losses for each of the two pipes. So for the first pipe, whatever that may be, it will be with the V1 in the first pipe, and then the same thing with a V2 in the second pipe with its respective parameters. In order to make my function general, and I'll show you how we will account for that in a moment and what the implications are, I don't really like this term here. It's a little bit annoying to me. We could leave it in, but it's just a little bit in the way. And so I'm going to ignore this term for the moment, but I'm going to remember that I'm ignoring it, and we'll come back to it in a moment. So I'm left with this expression here, having neglected those Bernoulli effects from changing the pipe size. And it has the terms, as I described before, the major and the minor losses, major and the minor losses in each of the two different pipe diameter sections. Okay, what I want to do is, as before, when we had a flow rate unknown problem, we wanted to solve an expression for a velocity so that we could iterate on that. And so I'm going to do that, but you notice that I have a velocity one and a velocity two here. I need to pick one of them. It doesn't really matter which one, but I'm going to pick to solve for V1. In order to do that, I'll use the conservation of mass equation, which tells me that V2 is equal to V1 times the ratio of the areas the pi is cancelling out and I'm left with d1 over d2 squared, which I can substitute in over here in order to express this in terms of my velocity 1. And then you'll notice that everything on this side of the equation is multiplied by a v1 squared. That means that I can rearrange this expression and solve for v1. And I'll get as before, v1 is the square root of some stuff. And I got a little bit more than I had before. I have the 2 over row coming from all these 1 half rows, which are multiplying the entire numerator and the entire denominator. I have the pressure drop in my system, P1 minus P2. I have the Z1 minus Z2, if there happens to be any elevation change in my system, or I can set that equal to 0 and not have any elevation change. And then in the denominator, I have the major losses and the minor losses relative to pipe 1. And then that for pipe 2, corrected by the fact that I need to reference that to pipe 1 instead of pipe 2. So there's my generic expression, and now I can proceed the exact same way I did before, except now I have to start by guessing a Reynolds number in the pipe 1, so that I can get a friction factor 1 estimate, and another Reynolds number, perhaps the same Reynolds number to start, in pipe 2, so that I can get an estimate for the friction factor in pipe 2. From that, I will then be able to calculate the flow rates, calculate a new guess of the Reynolds number, and then calculate again these friction factors and iterate, just like we did in the other problems where we didn't have two diameters. So I've implemented this in a Python function. We can have it here, and we can see, hopefully, how this is simply an implementation of what I just described using this equation here. We can see the main equation is solved right here, for my first velocity, it is the square root of this 2 multiplying the numerator and this rho multiplying the denominator. In the numerator, I have my dp, so that's my p1 minus p2, and I've just called this z, but that z then is obviously the difference z1 minus z2. And then in the denominator, after my rho, I have the losses for the first pipe, f0, l0 over d0, and the sum of the minor losses in that pipe. Then I have my correction to reference it to my 
velocity in the first pipe, and the same thing. And all I'm doing then is starting with an initial guess of my Reynolds number, calculating a friction factor of that initial guess, calculating this velocity, then I calculate the velocity in the second pipe from conservation of mass, then I can calculate my Reynolds number based on those new estimates of the velocity, put out some information, and loop around again until I get convergence. And I can change in this, I've made it generic so I can have a maximum number of iterations, and I can also set a tolerance to which I want that convergence uh, to be satisfied. So now this problem becomes extremely simple. I put in the dp exactly as I solved it from the previous one. I used the k total that I solved from the previous one. I put in my roughness height, the lengths of my two pipes as before, the diameters as before, the density and viscosity for hexane. I put a fairly low tolerance. And now you can see this function going through the iterations, getting the initial guess of the friction factor from which it's able to calculate the velocity in the Reynolds number, which enables getting a new estimate of the friction factor to calculate the velocity in the Reynolds number until we reach convergence. In this case, it took five iterations and it returns to me the velocity in pipes one and two, which are called zero and one in the Python. And I can multiply that by pi d squared over four in order to get my flow rate. And what happened here? The flow rate is now 3.66 or 3.67 times 10 to the minus three instead of the 3.8 that we had in the previous problem. And that is because of this approximation, this term that I canceled out, the Bernoulli effects that I just arbitrarily canceled. I took away this term when it should actually be here. Now I can correct for that and still use this as a generic function, which is why perhaps this was an interesting thing to do. Notice that this term here can be captured identically, one half rho v squared, one half rho v squared, by adding a one in my minor loss coefficients. Likewise, if I add a minor loss in my first coefficient of a minus one, then I will recover this term, knowing full well that that's what I'm doing. I'm putting in a minus one in this term and a plus one in this term in order to recover this, so that I capture the fact that when I decelerate the flow by expanding my pipe size, that I do in fact get a relative pressure rise in the pipe. So I'll repeat my function and all I've changed here is that in pipe one, I had the k total that I had before, I've subtracted one from it, and I've put a one where I had a zero in the pipe two. It goes through its iterations and we see that we get back to very many decimal places, the exact solution we had before, 3.8 times 10 to the minus three cubic meters per second. There's the flow rate unknown in a more complicated system with two different diameters and hopefully a very useful Python function that you can adapt to whatever software you wish to use should you have to do these problems with any kind of regularity. And of course, it would be very easy to expand this to a system of three different diameters and more. Next, we'll look at an example that is for your optional use if you wish to look at it, where we have a piping network or two branches in it, and we'll look at the question of what happens to your roommate shower if you flush the toilet while he's in it. And we'll do that with both a half inch and a three quarter inch pipe, which are the old choice and the new choice for domestic plumbing systems.